that Joseph has now found favor and a good name in Egypt. You think? That's, that's what I think. When success comes your way, when you have favor and a good name, don't get cocky about it. Give God the glory. This morning we are talking about uh, the fact that finding favor <coughs> leads to influence. And once you get that too, you know, you need to go back through all these principles again. I want to tell you, each of you this morning, doesn't matter why you thought you came here, uh, you come for a divine appointment. James rocked in here four or five months ago, whenever it was. James, the boy from England, and he wondered why he was coming here. And he actually found a job by coming here. And he found a new sort of a move forward with God through coming here. Uh, no matter why you thought you came here, because you came for the baptism, because you came, because your husband said so, or your wife said so, whatever reason, you have a divine appointment with God, and God has a purpose for you on planet Earth. Amen. Romans 8, 28. Oh, let's read, we'll read this together. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. In all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. In all things. When you are wearing the coat of many colors, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Even when you're wearing the coat of many colors, God is working for your good. And, 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 and if you love him, and even when you dream the dream of vision and success, God is working for your good. Even when the brothers put you down the well, God is working for your good. Even when the brothers take you out of the well and sell you to the Midianite slave traders, God is working for your good. Uh, when you are falsely accused of some misdemeanor, God is still working for your good. When you live and work in the favor of God and humankind, God is working for your good. When you get the promotion or the demotion, God is working for your good if you love Him and are called according to His purpose. But your good is contingent upon your response and your attitude in any and all of these circumstances. Here's the thing. God can turn an evil intention by somebody else and some of you straight away you think some of that evil intention to get. That's okay to think that. God can turn an evil intention by someone else into something good for His purpose for you. God can do that. His, Joseph was put down a well, sold into slavery, falsely accused, imprisoned. Uh, you might say that they were evil intentions. Am I right? I think they were. Uh, and, and, and the evil actions were going on here. And, and, and you might think about your situation, whatever it is, your marriage partner betrayed you, uh, your business partner jipped you, someone sacked you unfairly, uh, you, term, you, you just, just got the boot, or you were falsely accused, or any other number of bad things that someone had negative intentions against you, it was a negative and a bad outcome, or God can turn that evil intention and evil situation into a situation for good, for his purposes through you. Genesis 50, verse 19, 21. Joseph is now with that seven fat cows, seven skinny cows, seven fat heads of grain, seven skinny ones, and, the, and putting the grain away in the store for seven good years. He's become Prime Minister of Egypt. See, in a lucky land, you can become Prime Minister like that, apparently. <laughs> And so in Egypt they had full barns for seven years of drought and people came to purchase grain from all over outside of Egypt, countries and lands far away, including his brothers from Canaan. You knew they had to come back. And see, he's selling them grain. And there's a whole lot of stuff you ought to read Genesis sometime and get the whole detail, which I'm not going to do this morning. Basically they figure out that this Prime Minister of Egypt back to his young brother Joseph, the one that used to have the coat of many colours. The one we put down the well, the one we sold into slavery. Oh my goodness, it's him. And now he's in charge of all of Egypt and of us. If he's got the same bitter mean spirit that we've got, we could be down a well for life or something worse. But Joseph said to them, Genesis 59 and 21, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives, so then don't be afraid, I will provide for you and your children. God has a purpose. 
Genesis 45 verse 8, so then it was not you who sent me here, but God. <laughs> you know, we think the bad people get us here, or the, even the good people get us here. But hey, God got you here this morning, God gets you where you get to. It was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. I, I would say that Joseph has found favour in the sight of God <coughs> and humankind. I think you would say that to me. I would say that God used for good what others have meant for evil. And he had purposes in that, to save many lives, we're told, and to provide for others. It's a purpose here. Joseph didn't use the position of favour in a good day to take revenge on these brothers who had treated him unjustly. I think if we have read this story, we saw it as a movie and say, yeah, get them, Joseph. Be mean to them. Joseph didn't do that. He made that to God. And if someone's been mean to you, it's some bad thing. You leave it to God, would you? Would you do that? See, listen to this. Romans 12, 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God for us. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. So here's the thing, someone has done something and you've taken offence at it. Well done. It's called the trap of offence. We did a whole series here last year on the trap of offence. And, and someone, you, you get your feelings hurt by something someone did. They probably don't even know about it. They probably don't even know. And you're embittered by this. You're a little slither, you're tossing them if I can get them off, fix them up. And they don't even know. They just travel on through life, being a Joseph. Well, well, don't do that. If there's any revenge needed, God will do it. You need to do a better job than you could anyway. So just let it go. Let it go. It's God. God's business is straighten out the wrong. So leave it to him. And he can turn, if you let him, he can turn what others meant for evil into good. God does that. Proverbs 3, 4, as we get ready to land. Then you will find favour and a good name in the sight of God and of humankind. Proverbs 22, verse 1. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Ecclesiastes 7, 1. A good name is better than fine perfume. It smells good. In good times, in bad times, folks, keep your attitude positive and sweet. If you didn't, it, it's something you have to work hard at. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, as we get regularly. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. <coughs> Lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I want to say to you this morning as we close this off, uh, you stay close to God. You stay so close to God. Don't get bent out of shape by any negative stuff that happens to you. Don't allow that to happen. Live in the light of God's love and of God's grace and his revelation. Listen to him. Listen to God. Follow him and he will make your path straight. Favour and a good name that is worth having in his sight and in the, in the sight of humankind is given by God alone. You can't manipulate it. And so we need to look at him. Father in heaven, thank you that you're all about giving us favour and a good name. But you want us to have the right attitude to receive it. Father, as we think about the principles we've looked at this morning, you, you can take what others mean for evil and use it for good, for your purposes in our lives and in the lives of those around us. I've got to know some of the stories here that some of these people in this house have lived. And sometimes they've had that stuff done to them like this. Nothing short of evil. But when their attitudes have been right, you've taken that and used it for good. That's my prayer this morning, dear Father every individual, that there would be favour and a good name on each individual, on each family, on each business represented here, each workplace, and upon this house. Father, we look to you this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, folks.